Hello, wonderful. Have you ever had something in your life happened that you thought, oh my gosh, how am I going to accept this or accept that it's really true or accept that it's really happening to me? Um, that is what Amy Shade and I are going to talk about today. You probably probably recognize Amy from uh, our work together on The Unstoppable You. And Amy and I have crossed paths often. And I think from our interview today, you will see why. Hello, Amy. How are you? Hello. I'm great, Sarah. And hello to everybody out there. I'm glad that we're spending this time together. Absolutely. And Amy, I know you've had your own history of toxic relationships and toxic situations that you're pretty vocal about. So you understand what it means to have to move into acceptance when something is feels like it's not even possibly able to accept, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think I, while I've been in many toxic relationships, I think my biggest shift into that was when my fiance passed away suddenly in 2011. And I was, you know, you're forced into this world of acceptance even while you're in shock and you're not sure exactly, uh, you know, where you're even at in time or, or you're in this weird existence when something like that happens to you and leaving a toxic relationship that can also happen to you. You're just like, you're not exactly sure where you stand. You're not exactly in your self-trust and what's next. So I've had that experience of really having to come to the point of radical acceptance and moving from there. And I, I do believe until we get into radical acceptance that um, it's hard for us to move forward. I, I do too. And people talk about forgiveness in the spectrum of toxic relationships. And I'm like, forgiveness is great, but acceptance, <laughs> like, yes, that's how they are. No, they're not going to change for whatever reason, rather than that, like maybe, uh, you know, the stages of grief, like if I bargain to God, maybe I can rewind time and my fiance won't die. If I bargain with the doctor, maybe I won't have that health diagnosis. If I bargain with the toxic person, maybe they'll have a personality switch. Yeah, that's, and the key with radical acceptance, there is no fixing. There is, <laughs> there's nothing. It's more like you, you become aware, you're aware, your awareness comes up of like, okay, something's not right. It's causing me either physical or mental pain. Uh, you have to have that awareness first that yes, <clears throat> this is not the man for you. This is not the job for you. This is not the time for you, whatever it is. There is that you need that awareness that it's like, okay, something is definitely not right. I'm not making this shit up. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. oh, can I swear on here? Yeah, if you're okay. I won't tell my dad. Yeah, I'm not making this up. Like some, yeah. I mean, because sometimes, especially leaving a relationship, we we don't even we've been you've taught me this gaslighted, right? So even trusting our own self and our own thoughts and our own worth is like, no, you you must have awareness that something is off. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what my second book is actually about, is mm -hmm. that getting unstuck, like problem solving and decision making. I know I talked about that at your recent Unstoppable You event, and it's really fascinating that, you know, we go through these situations and completely lose trust in ourselves. And I, you talked about self-trust in the radical acceptance process and accepting what's happening and, and that trust um, that your senses aren't lying to you. The world isn't, because that's what it can feel like. Is someone lying? Is this a joke? Yes. And oftentimes <clears throat> our friends and family make excuses for that person also. So then we start going in this negotiation of back and forth instead of like, no, I'm going to sit mm -hmm. here. <clears throat> I'm going to understand that. I'm just going to accept that. Yes, this is not normal. This is not healthy. And this is not really ultimately what I want. Mm -hmm. And I know that because I'm feeling it in my body. I'm having these thoughts that are driving me nuts. I'm not at peace. So there is, and once you get to that point, there is a settling of peace that you come to actually, because now you're like in knowing like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm actually, this is actually true. And I said, you don't have to do anything about that yet. You just kind of like, whoa, you sink into it. Because 
we make excuses and radical acceptance also means you cannot, you have to see the truth about the situation. Hmm. It's no excuses. Well, he's just having a bad day. Or, you know, oh, um, <clears throat> you know, I they're, they're just like, something's not working because blah, blah, blah. It's always external, right? So no excuses. There cannot be any excuses in radical acceptance. As I say, it's not anything you have to do about it. It's just kind of like, okay, this is where we're at. We're leveled here. This is what's happening. That's it. It's such an important topic. And I'm so glad we're saying it because it's so hard in the context of a toxic relationship because you just, it's that smart girl syndrome. Oh, if I just work a little harder, they'll change, you know? And I'm also grateful you talked about it as a body awareness, right? Because sometimes we try to play a head game with ourselves. Yeah, I mean, your body is your, uh, will tell you everything <laughs> if you just listen. So, I mean, you have to, for me, when I was going through that major loss, you know, I would do, I would, with every morning I would wake up, I would do a body check. You just start that practice. Wake up, open your eyes. What does my body feel like? Is it at peace? Is there anger? Is there angst? Am I nervous? Am I in fear? Uh, so it's great to get in touch with your body um, because it tells you what's going on. And in the morning, it's a great thing to do, like do that a body assessment and just stay in that radical acceptance and look at, oh, I'm actually feeling fearful today. I'm feeling fearful right now. You don't have to really do anything about that either at this moment. It's just like a practice. I'm a dancer. I've performed on stages, practice, practice, practice. This is to start practicing, which is the next thing of radical acceptance is becoming the assessor of your life. That's what I mean. You don't have to do anything about it. You don't have to judge it. You don't have to feel bad about it. You just start assessing. Hmm, how am I feeling after that conversation? I'm not feeling too good. Okay. It's just like you start practicing being the assessor instead of being diving deep, so deep into our lives that we are in pain and we cannot move forward and we are stuck. Yeah. It, it collects such good data as you're speaking. I know you're talking about in radical acceptance, but it's the same language I use mm -hmm. in deciding if someone's toxic or good for you to be around, you know, whether it be dating or a job or whatever. And you listen to your body and it's like, after every conversation, I feel small. I feel confused. I, I feel disconnected with my own voice. I feel like a little bit like something's weird or off. That's what being toxic person proof is all about. But if we can't slow down enough to ever do that body scan, self-evaluation, how am I checking in with me? Danger will always abound because we're like, oh, whatever signals my body's sending me or the universe is sending me, push away, push away, push away, push away, right? Yes, and this is a journey and I'm a... a I'm about the vision. So I'm about you being the visionary of your life. No one else. It's you first, you're in charge of it, and it's your vision. And I say to myself, you know, we all, all of us out there wake up, you know, many mornings, some little bit of mornings, feeling fearful, feeling in judgment. We all do it because it's normal. It's the human condition. And I believe that's okay too. That's just how it goes. <laughs> That's radical acceptance. We are human. We are subject to certain emotions and feelings and thoughts that, that we can't really escape. But what can we do is like learn how to manage it better, learn how to come to terms with it, learn how to like really embrace, you know, I'm feeling fearful today. Now, that's okay. Now, what can I do to really get myself out? 
And that's when we get to create steps to really bring ourselves up because we are the visionary. We are responsible for how we feel. I love your description of that because I heard you talk about a noticing in the awareness rather than a flooding, right? Like that flood of fear, that flood of whatever. That's not what we're talking about here. That That's probably unhealed trauma and, and some of that, that um, definitely people want to take care of if they're becoming so emotionally flooded and anger, despair, pain they, that they can't move forward. But you're talking about a really healthy place of feeling your feelings in just the noticing. Yes. And I will have to say that, you know, after uh, my fiance passed away, I did, I was in deep trauma for about three and a half years. Like I could hardly leave my house trauma. Um, so that was, and in that trauma, yes, you are so uh, entrenched that, you know, I actually hit radical acceptance in that too. I said, okay, this is what I cannot do. And this is what I can do. Say it again. Okay. I, oh, every woman needs to learn that phrase. Uh, yes. Say that phrase again. again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you mute me? This is what I can do. And this is what I cannot do today. I think you're muted. Yeah. Well, I muted myself so I could shift in my chair. And okay. <laughs> But no, I was making food for my mother's birthday recently. Mm -hmm. And my sister has always historically done so much of the cooking and my mom, you know, so I just, I was going to take care of it. I was going to do everything, but there were kids and siblings and cousins and it was, it was very chaotic. And my husband came up and he said, oh, do you not have the drinks ready? My husband's great. He, he had mm -hmm. made the steaks. He'd been very helpful, but he came in, he said, do you not have the drinks ready? And I said, I'm doing absolutely everything that I can do right now. I can't do anything else, you know, but even, and he went, okay. And even that language within a relationship or in a job or in a, any type of situation, it was so, I don't think about it as being brave at this point, but when, you know, at the earliest part of my journeys, that was probably very scary. Oh, He'll think I'm not superwoman. He'll think I can't do everything. People, my mother and sister are going to think I'm a failure today because I didn't get the drinks because I was getting the food out of the oven. I mean, that, that's crazy talk, but it's something we have all done at points in our lives because it feels so scary to say, this is what I can do. This is what I can't do. Yeah. And that comes with um, assessing. So as everything's going haywire, you're not involved in the craziness. You're actually, well, let me just assess what's going on here. Okay, this is what I can do and this is what I can't do based on what's in front of me. Because when we get entrenched in the chaos is when we get guilt, shame, emotions, instead of like, wait, this is like too much for one woman right now. <laughs> like This is like... This is insane, but what can happen is I can just say, hey, you know, um, I can't, I'm having a hard time with this. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. Would you mind helping me with this? Instead of like trying to be superwoman and not being in radical acceptance that this is not, this is too much for everybody. This is too much for you. Mm -hmm. Cause then mm -hmm. that's how the assessor really works because you're like, I need to pull back a little bit and like, just view the situation in all situations, whether it's at work, at home, in your relationship, holidays, whatever it is, it's like, let me just assess the situation here and decide, you know, what I want to do about it. And, and accept I that I have two hands, except that there's 10 people in my kitchen, except that there's children running around in my feet that I'm saying, you know, my sisters, I'm like, you do the babysitting so I can do the cooking. I mean, but without going into, I must be a terrible daughter. I must be a failure because I couldn't have more than two hands. Oh, people never want to eat at my house again. Oh, I mean, just all the spiral, spiral that um, it's easy to go to. And that's not acceptance. Acceptance is I have two hands. I'm doing the best I can. The end. That's the end. That's the end, the end of the sentence. And that's actually, oh man, it's so nice to just like, you know, it is what it is. It's like, I'm, it, it is, it brings peace to me. Radical acceptance peace brings that peace and also confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not yes. chasing. I'm not overworking. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not, you know, you don't want to feel like you're on that spiral. And, you know, once those, I mean, I always say women, you know, we're very creative. That's part of our feminine uh, power is our creativity. It's also uh, could be a downfall in our thoughts because we're making up all kinds of stories. <laughs> Right? That's a great point. Yes, yes. Because we are very creative and we can take one thing and just create this story. And I want us as women to say, yes, we are beautiful, creative beings. No, we don't have to create that story, but we can still like create a different story of empowerment of, of like, you know, I can ask for help. I love when my husband helps me. I don't, I'm not married at this point, but you know, when I was uh, married or in my relationships, yeah, I love when men help me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, it, no guilt, no, no rest of the story. Now, what advice within the conversation of radical mm -hmm. acceptance, I could almost hear some of my listeners saying, and I remember this feeling of thinking, oh, the toxic person is winning if I let go of that energetic pull of they shouldn't have done that to me, they shouldn't be that way. Uh, what is your kind of thoughts on acceptance in that arena? Yeah, for me, anytime that my thoughts go to anyone else and how they're feeling or what they're doing, I have a problem. Like mm. to me, I'm like, I, I need to make sure I'm in alignment with my values of who I am. Uh, with my vision and what I truly desire, I have to make sure that I move from that space so that I'm in integrity with myself. So if I, if I'm worried about losing, I'm already losing. If I'm thinking I'm going to lose, I'm going to be weak, I'm going to lose... No, the best, most powerful thing to do is to let go and surrender. Mm -hmm. And then reframe the story. And surrender is not giving up. I remember that used to be one of my big trigger words. Um, mm -hmm. And I was really grateful. Even as you said it just then, I was like, oh, there was no even teeny tiny sparkle reaction on uh, on my end because emotionally that yeah, I was like surrender <laughs> I'm joking now <laughs> see it's a terrible <laughs> terrible energetically <laughs> but I remember thinking no and that felt like giving up losing um defeat you know um and it's not it's the opposite. They're, they're actually trapping you. Yes. Trapping. They're keeping mm -hmm. you hostage. And they're not even there. It's like, if, you've, if you're gone and they're still keeping you hostage, it's because of these stories you're telling yourself. Mm -hmm. And once you're in these stories, you're not in yourself. And, and, and to what, like, okay, my responsibility in that, the, the reframing of that situation is really important. Like, what did I learn from that? How can I do better next time? Um, you know, I think when you are stuck in that type of conversation, you are still a hostage to that person. And if you have any like fight in you, I would say fight for yourself and your freedom. Always fight for yourself and your freedom. I love that. Is that part of your vision language too? You know, as you think about creating a vision? Yeah. So creating a vision is really about radical acceptance first. What do you truly desire second, which causes this gap? <clears throat> and then you get to move forward. But before you move forward, you have to let go. You have to reframe those stories. You have to when you let go and you reframe and you um, challenge those stories and you you find new opportunities and you rewrite the stories. If you had the chance to rewrite it and do mm -hmm. it over, what would that look like? Who do you get to be in that? And that's where you start becoming that visionary. Oh, I would have, I would have had the courage. Oh, you would have been courageous. So next you're like, as I say, I'm about practice. So I also do being a visionary is about rewriting what happened also so that 
you get to be that person in that scenario of who you really wanted to be. And then you get to practice being that person. Mm. And I love the language of practice. I, I know my listeners are used to hearing that. And I was a piano major. I yes. know you're a dancer. And, but it's that sense. Cause it's like, I wasn't born knowing how to play the piano. I had to practice piano. I'm sure you were born dancing, but not at the level that you (laughs) were able to accomplish, right? And you had to practice. Yeah, and I encourage people to, you know, go back to their childhood, whether they were on soccer, whether they were in piano, whatever they did, um, tennis, whatever it was, to remember what it took to actually be good at that thing. Because many of us aren't doing those things anymore. I mean, I'm still... I still am. So I have that in my brain all the time, but to go back and realize, oh my God, I was so good in soccer. And what it took was practicing three times, four times a week after school Mm -hmm. and in weekend playing on weekends. And you start understanding that this life is really about getting dirty in there and practicing, not being perfect. And that's the mind shifts, right? Uh, You know, it's easy to say growth mindset, fixed mindset, but but that's truly what it is, that sense of practice that where it becomes a habit. You, when I'm playing a C major scale, I don't have to think about that. I've done it so many, I don't think about that anymore. Um, But, and there's certain things in your life that it's like, oh, that's just habit. And it's creating these new habits of thinking, of acceptance, of of creating that vision in our own lives, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And if you're in fight mode, I would say like, really reflect on that and ask yourself, what are you fighting for? Are you fighting to be right? Okay, you're right, now what? Like, these are the questions we should be asking. If you're in fighting mode, really like, what are you fighting for? Because a person who's right doesn't fight. They actually know it in, in their heart. And they're like, oh, okay. But I, I agree completely. I had someone kind of say some ugly things about me on the internet. Like nothing major. They were, I, it, it wasn't a big deal. But, you know, they had sent like three were three messages before I even noticed. And I was like, Oh, ignore whatever. And I then I posted it in my group and I said, Oh, and block, you know, I was showing and they were like, Oh, and it was interesting that they started defending me in my group. And I was like, I appreciate that. And that's lovely. But there was no trigger within that process that I thought I needed to defend myself to this person. I was like, Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, they've done that a couple of times now. I need to block them. The end, you know, I put it in my group as a teaching example, but Mm -hmm. it was fascinating because if you are other times in my life, I have desperately tried to defend myself and I'm sure, I hope I've outgrown it. Who knows? You know, I don't want to pretend that I'm going to be perfect. Uh, But, you know, there's times where I was desperately, oh, how, you know, how could you possibly think this about me? And now it's like, okay, that's the radical acceptance. It's like, well, you don't, you don't really know. I've never met this person. You know, I, I, you don't know me. Okay. You don't know me, but I know me. And I would encourage, I would also say that it's okay if it hurts your feelings. Mm -hmm. Like I get something, I get something like that every once in a while. I'm like, ah, (laughs) hurts my feelings, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I don't fight. I don't fight back because it's, uh, it's like, oh, I feel that. Oh, that hurt my feelings because I think I have such, I don't know, faith in human humanity. Like I have faith. Like I always say, like, I have faith in you, Sarah. I appreciate you. I have faith in your humanity. That's who I always want to connect with is a person's humanity. And that happens in the work that I do because I, I'm not interested in the stories or the labels you put on yourself. I'm only interested in what you and I, what we connect with, what can we connect with while we're together? And that connection is going to be real. It's going to be human to human. I love that. Amy, where can people connect with you on the online space? Yes. 
So yes, I uh, I know Sarah's going to put my links into the show notes into uh, the platform, but um, it's amyshade.com. You can that's my website. Um, I will also be offering um, a free downloadable on uh, becoming the visionary of your life. So it'll take you through the radical acceptance. It'll take you to your vision. It'll take you into letting go and rewriting those situations, rewriting and how you want to envision it so that you could practice and really show up in that way. I and, love it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, I encourage your audience to really uh, dive deep into that. And I, um, I also have um, some videos that'll go along with that downloadable. And uh, yeah. It's, it's really about, you know, even that mantra, I am the visionary of my own life. When you are in fear, when you are in anger, you know what? I am the visionary of my own life. Is this part of my vision? Is this truly what I desire? If not, then we got to find ways to start moving that energy, making different decisions, and it always comes down to you first. So if you had a one minute mic to the entire world uh, where you could say anything that you wanted, what would you say? I would say, you know, you are here. Really, this is like a ride. Like I always think life is a ride. You are here to be fully expressed in this lifetime. And if... There's only now, there's only now. And, and for some of us, it's hard to understand that. But when you lose someone, when they pass away in front of you and they are gone, you realize there is only now. And this is your opportunity now. Not tomorrow, not five years from now, but now. And I encourage you to really understand just how powerful you are, how beautiful you are, and your time is actually now, like right now. I love it. I love it. I love the, the power of now, right? Amy, thank you so much for helping us on our journey to becoming toxic person proof. 